The Chinese brush painting of Quan Jung is direct, economic, and poetic. In a few strokes, he creates a universe on paper, a few strokes that emerge from a lifetime of patient practice and centuries of tradition. Born in a small village of only four homes in southern China, Quan eventually studied in Hong Kong. There he met his wife. In 1964, Quan and his family came to San Diego to join his father in the family business. Quan continued his painting regimen at every opportunity, gradually gaining the confidence and the skill required to be recognized as a master teacher of Chinese landscape, portrait, and brush painting. Although Quan has survived political upheaval and loss, he considers himself to be very lucky. He has achieved membership in the National Academy of Design. His family is healthy and happy, and he loves his beautiful adopted city of San Diego, California. In this video workshop, you will sit in the front row as Quan introduces you to the materials in brush painting rice paper, brushes, and ink. He then will demonstrate six traditional brush paintings. The first of two prawns will demonstrate the 10 classic brush strokes used in brush painting. Next, his lyrical swallow birds. And two bamboo paintings, one in calm weather and the other in wind and a serene hibiscus painting. And finally, a painting of two classic horses and a cowboy. Now let's join Quan Jung as he demonstrates the art of Chinese brush painting. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this Chinese brush workshop. My name is Quan Zhang, and I'm going to talk about Chinese brass painting. Chinese uh, brass painting is actually drawing by bamboo brass. It, it is related to Chinese calligraphy. There are several styles of Chinese writings. These characters are painting. The first one is the old text writing, and then they change to another one through time, and then change to something else. Although they look different, they mean the same. Another example here is the word wing. Wing means last a long time. Here's the old writing, and it's more. Uh, later on, they use this one. And nowadays, we're using this variation of brush work. And this one is the casual running style. They mean the same thing, but the writing is different. Why they are so much changing? When paper was invented, and the people in China write characters, then time people changing their writing habits paper function with the brush and ink in a different way. There are quite a few of uh, tool equipment we use for brush painting. First, we talk about uh, the brush. We use for brush painting uh, the bamboo brush uh, made of animal hair. Uh, some are harder than others, some are softer. The most commonly used is the ship here, the white one, like this. Those are the, the ship here. They are really soft. They have the, lots of hair in there, and they can pick up lots of water. Another type of the, the sable here, properly made of horse hair or wolf hairs. All those a uh, little bit stronger here. Uh, we use this type of uh, brush to paint detail works like or uh, bow brush work, uh, stroke 
most of the steel for the bamboo painting. But for, for most of the professional painter, they would prefer this type of brush. I have this one for the brush. <laughs> to, to rest the brush on. <laughs> After you, you paint, we have uh, ink we use. And ink grinders, ink stick, liquid inks, and even uh, black inks with acrylic printing and all those color paper. And this one is to mix the color with dishes we use when we are painting. Those are the, the dishes to, to store colors after we use. This one is to wash the brush frequently. When, when we do painting, we have to wash all the time uh, in some with the final festival. The ink come with uh, like a, a stick, so it, you can uh, keep the ink and store it for a long time. When you want to use it, bring it out and put some water into the ink stone and use this ink stick to run and run and grind out the ink with the stick. There's also an easy way to do this without doing this hard work by using liquid ink. Liquid ink is available now uh, in the market, but for the consistency of the ink, sometimes we do need a lot more uh, work to work it out to a certain consistency. Another way is to use black inks from acrylic paint or other water soluble ink. Just put some of the uh, from the tube and then mix it with the liquid ink to get the consistencies for your painting. Here's how to do this with the brush and dilute the aquatic paint into the bowl. Oh, that will give you the consistency of uh, ink to work with. Ink sticks come in all shapes. It's a very decorative and uh, art in itself. This one come in a square form. Uh, come in all kind of design, symbolic in it. Most frequently people would use is one like this, uh, the round one, it looks like a stick. The paper we use it should be absorbent, translucent, and without any hard edge effect. We can see all the brush later on. That is a good paper. Now, the most company use rice paper, but actually they are not made of rice. They, they would make of something else. There's a one in the market uh, in China that's popular for brush painting. It's called Xuan paper. The strand paper here, I would like to show you. The first one is one ply strand paper. The one ply is very thin, very thin. And it's for the professional use. Those are uh, not so easy to control. Uh, the water would run uh, very easily because of only one layer of uh, paper. The second one is this two ply, two ply strand paper. It's a lot thicker 
for the brush. It, it holds water more steadily and it also records all the brushwood. You can work on it slowly and it's very good for uh, brushwood. Also, very close to the Chinese strand papers come in a book, like a patch of a book of rice paper. Come from Japan, and a little bit different is they are not so absorbent. They are a lot smoother uh, in a different texture. This one is a thin one, and this one is a thicker one. When selecting paper, maybe the best way is to put some water on it and see how it runs. It has no uh, hard edge in it. It would be a good paper. Another type of uh, uh, paper is made of the texture of the bark. Linen is thin. You see, it's how thin it is. After painting, this paper needs mounting right away. So to keep the uh, painting in there, or you can mount it before you paint. This one is essential. Roll of paper towel. Now, how are you going to wipe up your brush, the excess water? Pull the brush, you have a very fine point. Another very useful tool is the wool cloth. You see how smooth it is? The wool cloth is better than a piece of paper. Uh, it also helps you to lay the paper on a flat surface. The wool actually supports the paper in a flat position. At the final stage of a brush painting, one would put uh, his signature on and then the stamp, of course, the seal or the chalk. The chalk is made of uh, soup stone. Soup stone is soft. Buy this uh, in uh, the Chinese uh, bookstore, uh, a soup stone without any carving on it. Design your own seal carve with uh, any wood carving knife. There's another tool we need is this silk ink usually come in uh, red colors. You will find it in art supply store. The function dictates the way we hold the brush. This is the traditional way of writing, holding a brush. Three fingers, holding it really tight. Press it really tight with the thumb against the middle and the index fingers. And then use the ring finger, use this ring finger to move the brush, the draw close to the table. When we draw detail work, this holding way is essential. The rest to put on the table that has station it and then moving the ring finger to draw or to write. This is one way of holding it type of holding, I call it lock-in hold, lock-in hold. Another type of holding is the three-finger hold. It would be holding a little bit longer uh, from the tape. This type of uh, holding we use the whole brush to draw bigger subject matter. Uh, why we standing up and the elbows lift on the 
lift it up, uh, place the brush work. That requires us to hold the brush in a longer stick. At the end of the bamboo brush, I call it the three finger hole. Three finger hole would draw these long lines on this great painting because it requires we, we, we stand up and draw long stroke. The orchid is definitely using the three finger hole. And the more detailed work, like the chrysanthemum petal, require the brush petal draw the outline of it. It's a more detailed work. I use this lock in hole. This prawn painting consists of 10 different strokes. Here is the rice paper, swan paper, two ply layers. Cut it for the size with water of the photo paper and then cut it. Just tear it down uh, when you wet it. Now, the first thing we do is to get the tongue of the ink. A little bit ink here from the wheel. Add a lot of water. So, the medium size well. I'm going to use a little bit cobalt blue at the painting. So, the brushwork would be mixed. Blue mixed a little bit ink. And after that, we can paint the, the prawn with some kind of blue tone color. Now line up the brush on the paper so you get a fine line. Same thing. You should line it up. We use three brush strokes. One is the, the center one and then two from each side to form the head part. And then we draw the body of the prawn with different type of brushwork. It's like a curve, a half moon. Uh, one parallel to each other. The tail here is different type of brushwork. It pressed down in three directions. And number four is the short whiskers. We're looking for something like here by pulling the brush in the same brush, irregular pulling. Small fit. It's like a comma. The brush will like a comma. See? That's the fit of the prong. The claw, uh, like two sharp V shape uh, claw here. One, and two. Then the arm would be three sticks, bamboo sticks, like. See? And we put the other hand uh, claw we have. One V-shaped claw and arm. Then we draw the long whiskers, another one, by pulling. It's something like this. After that, 
We need the heavy ink to draw the blend of the prawn and the eye of the prawn. In order to, to register the heavy ink brushwood, we have to do something about this because we just paint it wet. It might spread too much. I use a piece of uh, paper towel to cover the, the head and move the finger to soak up some of the, the water. Use pure ink. Pure ink, make a reverse stroke, uh, act, act like this. One, two, one, two, up. And then the eye. And then the eye. We can paint another one. The first. And the body. And the tail. The whisker. And the feet. And it has a claw. And repeat that. And long whisker. Maybe that heavy ink is not, not thick enough, so I use some of this acrylic paint to make it just really pure black. That's how two prawn is made. Now, all we do is to balance it, to figure it out where to put the signature and the seal. I would put it right here because I away from, from, from the center of interest. I put my name and using black ink hole and place it really down on the table and write on it. That's it. In the right direction. That concludes a painting of prawn. Now this lesson is the swallow fur. This fur requires only two tons of ink, the real black one, and a little bit uh, direct end. By pressing down and lift the action, we create a bird head like this. And then the wing. And another wing. Let's say we put it on this side. And then the tail at the same action, really. So we created a swallow bird, all in a very short stroke, press down and lift up fast. Next step, we, let, we do a little line drawing. We, we line up the brush, have a fine horn by 
uh, lower down the finger and draw the peak of the bird and the body. Uh, there we go. Then we put really heavy ink back to draw the eye. So here you go, the bird is done. Swallow do have a red shirt sometimes. Now let's do that. I'll find some red color right here. Put it in the dish. The water. And here come the rest of it. A little pressing down action to do it. The first bird is done. We're going to repeat some of the birds, press it down, and draw the wing. And the tail. Fresh, short. And we draw the peak of the bird and the body. So, and a little t-shirt, chest. Then we put the eyes in. See, we have two birds. Oh, in the spring, flowers coming out everywhere accompany the bird. We can do that right here. Use a slanting brushwood to tree buck and then draw. like a branch and add a little bit action uh, string with a little dot here orange color to decrypt the flower we have and put the flowers somewhere Something about a flower so it can stick with the branch. We, we need some leaves. Young leaf is kind of yellow and green mixed together. So there we go. That's about enough, I think. So we add a little bit black colors to the leaves. So we'll make it strong. Outline the wind, the wind in, in the leaf. That's outline. Where to put the signature is the final balancing, the penature. So we look, look uh, directly, see the flow like that, and I would put it right here. Balance it. 
So we won't take a long time to make a classical painting. Actually, there we go, Cecile. For this painting. And we have a painting made. Now, we are doing a bamboo tree from the, the leaves. Remember that we are drawing triangle. formation triangle this would be the major center of interest then we go to the tree trunk so we start from here and drawing up going up and then we connect it with the branches and then up that's supposed to the knot and the branches will go up like this another triangle somewhere. I probably pick up the wrong brush, but the, there we go. There's this Persian pot. Okay, we add a little bit. That's the dispersion. First, this tree trunk, and then the leaves, and then the leaves. Right. That's the dispersion. Bamboo lips in one direction only. They signify the wind is blowing this way. And then we have a bamboo stick or tree trunks going from this direction. I think we would do the trick now. By this leaf, we can tell the wind is blowing. So it's kind of a, a, a join-in type. Not enough for 
the center of interest, maybe. So I put it right here. And the shoes go in to balance the painting. That's one. We're gonna do a hibiscus. We're gonna do a red one with lots of watercolors. So here we go. A pressing stroke. Like that. And then with less. With less. So I, what I would do is to pick up some of the waters instead. Uh, so here we go, the second one. And less. Uh, and even less, we're gonna simply wash off. for the last two flower petals. Now, now, the next one will be a little bit different colors. Uh, I, I pick this orange colors one with some of the red colors to mix it for the first petals. Like this. That's one, and pick up some of the colors. And for the second one, and the third one. So wash off the brush for suck some of the colors, and make the fourth and the fifth. So try to make it everyone a little bit different. In, now first off, I will use the real red one. If the red color is not heavy enough, I would do add a little bit ink on it. So to make it darker, so make this flower filament by using a close to the tables vertical stroke a reverse one, like that. First this direction, and, and the neck, back. So it will come out like this. This size bigger, smaller. So add, add up a little bit more on the filament on the top. Maybe five or what. I wash the brush again to pick up some yellow colors to make some dark. Make sure the water is being soaked away from the towel. And here is the yellow, le lemon yellow, okay. And we'll mix some of the dark here. It's part of the flower filament. We will uh, put some red color on the flower filament. Uh, flower petals by uh, dropping lines like that, like a fancy.
same goes with this man stuff right here. And add a little fill top. Maybe we should add some here. Make a fine line. Fine, a fine drawing help to make a point of the brush. Uh, that needs lots of pulling. gonna finish this pedal drawing pretty soon. After the flower, the branch. I got some of the pigment, the blonde pigment. Drawing from this side to that side. Maybe I get a little bit slanting brush. then pull. I will leave some areas empty. So I will add the leaves later to fill up the empty place. That's how we do it. Now, wash my brush again. And fill the brush with the leaf colors would be blue, yellow, mix it. A casual, very casual way of doing it. A slanting brush or vertical brush, that's another. Here come some of the, the leaves. Pick up the water and the blue color. Landing brush, vertical brush. It's a cash in a cash way. Water again. Make it a lot of water. We put some ink color underneath. And I start to outline the leaves with 
Tá, tá velho. Olha lá, papai. To make sure that the, the brush is dry enough. Dry enough. Just keep doing this until all the, the leaves finished and we will, we will do something else for this painting. Okay, that's it about correct. Maybe we will do something else to as a disperse element. And slanting brush. Draw some textures. Draw some textures. After the texture is drawn, then we will draw lines uh, of a rock. It's got some kind of rock. So we will say the rock will face this way and the light the, the light will come this way so then we have a rock. Had the few dots. I'm suggesting this some kind of mold or whatever. Grow. We'll put a little bird here, something to add the interesting. facing this way and he was sitting there and the eye got for the bird well this hibiscus is finished now I want to put the signature somewhere that uh, we have to follow the full this uh, a directional flow for that. So I would just put it right here.
I usually uh, start from the neck first, then the head and, and the body and the leg. A big star <laughs> with the leg. And the chest. The head for it. So a little bit the hair, the ear. After we examine a little bit, we draw the body. And then we, we draw the, the back of the head. And I will change the little brush to finish the job. So the action is going like this. One, two, one, and two. You get a leg. And then you have one and two. And about the chest here, we need some more to just action. And then go one, two, one, two again. Another one. After all this, I just connect all those elements in the horse. In the hood. And maybe I put the eyes on when this thing is dry up a little bit. Maybe we put another horse on the top here with less value or different color. Let's wash the brush in. Right. 
the small brush again. So, there we go. And then on the one, two, one, two again. And the main. and the tail so it's a very casual way to, to achieve that effect nothing tied up but in a casual way it's fun and it has the eyes for this horse now the question is should we put people in or <laughs> not? <laughs> Maybe we can put some cowboy in there. So we will draw a cowboy and then somewhere here. Dropping a cowboy, we probably need a lot more uh, colors. Let's see how it looks like. <laughs> Let me put it up and see. So, the painting, the center of interest is done. Now what we want to do is to put the signature. So I'll put it here. and the seal to balance it. Okay. This art takes time and uh, needs practice so it looks might be easy but to have it in control you need to practice the brushwood for a long time that's why I uh, suggest you work on one brush one type of brush first like I used my favorite one not too big but you use it and get used to it, then you control the brushwork well. Uh, one step at a time, you improve and you have in control the waters and in control the action, and you will be successful in this brush painting. 
I hope you enjoy this demonstration and start working on and bring good result. I'm sure you you will enjoy it. Thank you. You couldn't use that brush <laughs> on the first, from the first. <laughs> it, we are going to talk about brass paintings. Uh, take another one. Welcome everybody to this Chinese book, uh, brass book. Oh, well, this cat happened to be trying to participate in this workshop, so there we go. That's what I do, my, uh, my still do in, in my kitchen. Kitchen's on the top level of my still. A few steps up is the kitchen. Step down to my studio. Back to the studio, go to the kitchen. That's all I did. Yeah, there's a kitty old down, kitty old. There's a triangle right there. <laughs> the ear, of course. There's a triangle right here. Triangle right here. <laughs> I've had composition the same. If you want to do that, 